Hi guys, I just want to do a simple and quick project today. Um, I want to use so art to make a jar label. Um, I have a bunch of different jars for a bunch of different things. And so this jar label tutorial is going to come in really handy for me. So I hope it's handy for you too. Okay, so the very, very, very basic thing about making a jar label is going to be the holes on the side. Okay. Oops, didn't do it. I forget. You can only do the side crop <laughs> and the bottom crop. And then for some reason, they don't have that same thing over here. So we have to go select rectangular selection. Pick from as close as we can, get as close as we can. Okay, and crop. Okay, that gives us the middle there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a basic form and then I'm going to go into So Wet Pro and I'm going to add my lettering because it's just so beautiful in there. It just does such a great job and you can place everything. And I hate, hate, hate teaching so art videos and referring people to so what pro because that's another expense. It's a whole nother level of understanding that I've barely even dived into. You know, so I want I want everybody to be really successful in so art before they need so what pro, but because um I can perfectly place my monograms into the design and save it all as ones. That's what I'm gonna end up doing. But right now we're just gonna make this um, quick little thing. So you need holes on each side. Try to get them as level as you can with that. Um, you need holes on each side and we're gonna copy and select this so it can be perfect match. Copy paste and then that did not work how I wanted it to because there's no thing on this side oops sorry oh view grid lines there we go okay so we need our first one to be right on this line in between those lines on both sides so let's get out of here <laughs> Let's go back up here. I'm picking the one with the rounded corners because I think that's just easier for the machine to try to figure out or the program to try to figure out. But you can probably just do the regular square ones too. Okay. Needs to have a decent size hole. What we're going to be doing with these ones is um, it's going to do a satin stitch around it. And then whenever you pull it out of the... Um, uh, hoop, you're going to use your, um, oh, why am I having such trouble with remembering stuff? You're going to use your seam ripper to just rip a nice little hole, just a nice little slot right there. And then there's going to be a slot over there on the other side. So let's click out of that, click select. We're going to just copy this one because it's the perfect size that we want. So copy. Oops, I forgot to paste first. <laughs> Oops, I moved it up. Oops, didn't realize I left that open. Okay, so now that I placed it back where it needs to be, I'm going to go in and select, copy, and then paste. It's going to give me another one up here in this corner. Okay, so we want it two over, right? We need two and it's actually three over. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's three over two. So it doesn't have to be perfect, you know, unless you're trying to sell it. Um, and if you want it to be like on something square, like on a, um, 
on a gift or something, you can just paste another one of these. And let's rotate it right here and then put another one down there. And then you can slide the ribbon in through there and it'll go behind the whatever picture you choose there and come out here. And same with this. It'll do that down here. Okay, so um, then you just, you know, the ribbon goes through the top and behind your picture comes out here. So you can, you know, tie it all in the back and have a cute little label on it. It's really, really fun. Okay, but we're going to get rid of those last two because I don't need to do that. I'm just doing regular jars. Okay, so this is very, 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 very simple. All right, so we are going to go to copy. Oh, select all. And the reason that I used paint and I use paint and everything is because it's free and um, and you can use, you know, lots of different images. You can move around a lot of different images. You can move around images within itself. You can crop out just one piece of stuff. There's a whole lot of, um, uh-oh, <laughs> that didn't work. I forgot to copy and paste. Okay, so select all copy and then go in here and now we should hit edit paste okay so this one is absolutely huge we don't need it that big so let's go in. let's make sure our colors are only two since we created it it shouldn't have any trouble really converting it it's whenever it's you know on a website and you take it off the website and you bring it into one program you have to convert it so let's resize the image down to 95 as a width. Okay, for mine, it's a four, four by four hoop. Okay, we don't need to crop it. We don't need to do anything else. So let's go in here to the stitch image. And we are going to go to applique center line. And we're going to use a bean stitch because I'm going to use felt, and I love the bean stitch and felt. So let's do a height, which is actually the separation on this one, and of three, and a height or a length of 45, which is going to be how big the stitch itself is. So like um, where you show no stitch, that's the three. Where you see the thread, that's the 45. Hope that makes sense. Okay, so we're just going to click on this one. And we're going to make it a cute little bean stitch. Even though this shows only one, there's going to be three steps. There's going to be um, your tack down. And then you're going to have your, your tack down is going to show you where to put your fabric. And then you're going to put your fabric down and then you're going to get your die line, which is going to be step number two. And then you're going to skip forward after you get your die line down here. We're going to skip forward to um, to do these. And then we'll come back to step number three to do the final stitch. Okay, I hope that that makes sense. So once we've done that, we've set this applique center line with a bean stitch, the height of three, and the length of 45, which is really the separation of three and length of 45. Okay, so we've done that already. Now we're going to go to outline center line. Okay, we're gonna actually stay at 15, but we're gonna bring our length to two. So now <clears throat> with a satin, oh, I've still got it on bean, sorry. Okay, so with a satin, it's opposite of the bean. The bean's height is the separation and the length is the stitch <laughs> but in here it's backwards you have to have the higher number here and the smaller number there so we're going to click on this buttonhole and we're going to have it to do a small that's going to do all the white okay so it's going to do a small satin stitch inside there and then it's going to do the white again dang it okay all right don't be like me zoom in <laughs> okay so we've got those set let's go in here and delete this color and that's all there is to it 
Okay, so I'm going to file, save as. I don't want to keep the picture right away. So this PC, removable disk, and let's save it as jar label oval. Okay, then we're going to, it's going to be in the removable disk. We're going to hit save. It's going to show us the printout over here. And now I'm going to go to my machine while I still have you guys on my voice. I'm going to load it up and it gives us four steps. So we get our number one, which is going to show us where to put it, um, the fabric. Number two, that that we put our fabric down and then number two tacks it down and then we're going to skip forward we're going to skip number three because that's the final stitch we're going to skip forward to um doing the uh buttonholes so why do we need to skip forward stephanie if you want to put a back on it i guess if you want to put a back on it, put the back on it in starting with step one. So go ahead and if you wanted to have a pretty back, like um, a really flowery, cute back, I was just going to have the stabilizer in the back, but then I realized how ugly that's going to be. So let's untalk about things. Okay, so <laughs> we have layer one. It's going to tell us where to put it. I'm going to actually go ahead and push that now. So number one is going to tell us where to put our fabric. Number two is going to tell us to put our fabric down. So this is where we're going to put our fabric on the front and flip it over and glue some fabric on the back. And now once you've glued the fabric on the back, give it a minute or two to sit and, you know, get dry up a little bit. You don't want it to be too goopy. It'll, it'll mess up your machine. Okay, so if you put both sides on, let us set a minute and then do the buttonholes and then go back and do. I've totally confused the heck out of you guys. Okay, so hoop your stabilizer <laughs> and then click number two or number one. And then it's going to give you the tack down, it's going to, or the die line, it's going to show you where to place your fabric. And then you're going to take your hoop off of the thing, you're going to place your fabric in the top and glue your fabric to the bottom. Then you're going to come back and do step number two, and then step number three, and then step number four is your buttonholes. Okay, and that's going to make it where your buttonholes are on both sides, and your buttonholes are actually your ribbon holes. Okay, I hope all of that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and get it printed out, and I will talk to you guys in a second. Thank you. Okay, so, um, you know, we're kind of all learning and growing, and I know I gave you guys a certain order whenever um, we uploaded it, but I kind of didn't follow that. <laughs> so what I did, um, because I forgot a step, that's the only reason why. So we did our die line and the die line and then I should have done my tack down and um and my placement and my lettering first and then put the back on but I didn't I wait I went ahead and did the back first so I just did a little bit of spray um put the color on let it get tacky <clears throat> excuse me let it dry up a little bit and then I flipped it over hooked it onto my machine and then I placed the felt on top of there and then it went ahead and did the die line. Now after the die line, it, um, I had to skip to number four and it did the um, buttonholes. Okay, so if I was going to do this the correct way, I would have done the tack down and then the lettering and then put the back on and then did the buttonholes and then did step number three, but I didn't do that. So I did the buttonholes and and then I went ahead and, and I had the backing on it already. So um, I just went ahead and did a D on it because it's just for me and it's home and I am learning and practicing still. So, you know, hopefully nobody expects any of my videos to be perfect, <laughs> but um, 
So here you go. I did the D and you'll see the D on the background, which I absolutely don't like, but you're not going to really see it in the small jar that I'm using. So there's your buttonholes and there's your pretty um, stitch 45 and 2. I believe either two or three, um, 45 being the part that shows and the two being the part that doesn't show. And so we just went ahead and cut out around and that, you know, had us, everything is part of this now. So we have the backing, the middle is the stabilizer and we have this top. So the next thing that we're gonna need is um, a uh, seam ripper one of these beautiful little seam rippers. And we're gonna stick it right into the hole that, um, into the buttonhole, which is actually gonna be the ribbon hole. Um, we stick it right into the ribbon hole, make a nice hole, and then be really, really slow and gentle about pushing it up. Um, I mean, it's already got reinforced edges, that's what the satin is, but you don't wanna push it too hard because that will make it just, go all the way through and you can still use it, but it won't look as cute. Okay, and so once you've got that done, you can slide your ribbon. Here's the the jar that we're gonna be using today. The reason why nobody can really see the back of it is because there's always um, spoons and stuff in it. And it's got this little glass thing and nobody's really gonna be paying that close of attention. But um, I would save it for step number three put my fabric on and then do the holes. So you're just gonna take a little bit of um, a little bit of ribbon and you're gonna slide it through the ribbon hole over the front and then to the back. If you do it from the back forward, it's gonna cover up your lettering. So we go down the back and see how that's showing it going through the back and see how you can see the D. If I didn't have the D there, it would be so adorable because that print is just so cute. But um, anyways, so you see what happens whenever you have to put that in there. So this is just showing you the back of it going through the front, through the back, and then wrapped around the um, container. And you know, I think in the future, whenever I plan to do this as an organizational tool, I will probably um, glue it in the back. But since this jar doesn't really get moved around a whole lot and nobody really does anything so ever pull stuff out and push stuff in. I'm just going to um, tie it in a pretty little bow this time. So there you guys go. Jar labels, you know, you can really get creative with them. You can really have a lot of fun with them and you can put anything on them. Alrighty, I hope that this was helpful. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.